uh, where a couple of times a year you circle up and basically just provide a forum and an opportunity for folks who are working in the world of heritage, cultural resources, uh, historic resources to compare notes as far as what is going on in your world and how we might potentially collaborate. I am ever more convinced that in the face of historical illiteracy across this country, that there is an important, uh, an important role for all of us to play. And, and the work that all of you do goes well beyond simply public history that might uh, appeal to or uh, to a small fraction of our society. But I want to confirm that the work that all of you do plays a role in keeping our eyes and eyes and eyes. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining. A uh, great group today. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like we do have someone online. Okay. So in keeping with tradition, what we will do is just quickly go around the room, both physically and virtually, and if you could state your name and what uh, affiliation you have, organizational or otherwise. That would be great. We have a few uh, specific items on the agenda for more in-depth presentations. But then we'll just uh, also just do our typical roundtable. We'll do uh, an provide an opportunity for each of us to uh, either elaborate more on what it is that we're working on, or if you uh, are not already presenting, to share with the group what is happening in your world and have a little bit of cross fertilization of ideas. So uh, to kick things off, since I've been talking here for a couple of minutes and haven't introduced myself, I'm Dave Strohmeyer. I am chair of the Missoula Board of County Commissioners. And I think I will leave it at that. Uh, why don't we begin it in the room, in the physical room here in the Missoula Public Library. It's so with Jim over here in the corner. <laughs> I'm Peterson, I'm the development director for the National Museum of Fort Sickles History here in New Zealand. And do that I'm the chief lines of the police officer from the Leonard's Leonard. And Snake, I'm the operations administrator for the planning firm. Hello, you know, Nick. Nick Bodie. Uh, I'm an outdoor recreation planner for the BLM. I'm specifically focused on burnout risk. And Sophia online. Hi, how's it going? Going great. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself and uh, tell us uh, your affiliation. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Sophia. I am on the Preserve Historic Missoula Board, um, and I also work with uh, the Missoula Downtown Partnership and the City of Missoula as well. Great. Nice for you to join us. Well, you cannot beat the view today. Uh, so, if nothing else, we'll be treated to a lovely uh, cityscape and fancy uh, view for this meeting. So, to kick things off, um, we do have four separate presentations today uh, diving into some specific things going on at partner organizations. We will start with, um, I'm assuming since, even though it says Randy, you're out uh, and it's, it's mixing the room, and you're here to tell us about the Long Ranch. Yes, yeah. So um, as many of you are probably aware, we're in the process of doing a master planning section at the Long Ranch from the Development Park. Uh, we're currently in the Think of the planning process. I don't have any hard to goal to share at this time, but just to kind of bring everyone to where we're at. Um, our consultant is currently hosting uh, meetings and on-site site visits with our core planning team, as well as 
some uh, some planning teams as well, including uh, Farm Connect, who is our tenant on the site there. Uh, the, these meetings are focused on two things. Uh, the first is a, establishing a thematic hierarchy. Um, this will help guide the story that we call the ranch, both physically and also just with our management philosophy of ranch going forward. And then also creating a map and site plan to uh, kind of go out sections of the range that are appropriate for certain users, not appropriate for other users. Um, so everything's still a work in progress, but we do have a central theme that I think I can share to knowing that it could be changed a little bit, but just to kind of help show where we're at today. Um, the, the, right now, the central theme that our consultant has come up with is change, change comes with time, as seen in the homesteads and ranches that altered business lifestyles and the industrial growth around the lawn that continues to affect farming and ag agriculture today. Um, I think if you are on site there, that, that really brings down, you can see all the industrial growth uh, around the preserved branch. So I think that's a really exciting core team to build upon there. Um, and then for the site planning process, uh, we're working to integrate a trail that leads throughout the property with different interpretive panels, um, while also making room for Farm Connect to grow with uh, just their mission and all, as well as the physical footprint. Uh, but then while also allowing space for property to host community events similar to Moon Moon Wing Off Ranch. Um, so once we have physical we have the board, we definitely come back and show us where we're at now. Are folks all familiar with, I uh, know some of you are, but uh, familiar with where the long room is? Well, we well, I, I'll kick it off this. So, if you've ever taken Fairway Boulevard out the airport, get off the interstate there, you've got the Eno's gas station, the Eno complex, and Big Sky Brewing. Well, the Lalonde Ranch is, this is how I refer to it for many years before I get out to it. And this cool looking old ranch farmstead, you know, uh, four square bridge house there, a small log cabin, a couple of barns, and until relatively recently there were no trespassing signs. And what uh, we've been able to accomplish, and this is a remnant parcel, I don't know, is it seven, eight, 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 seven, 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 So a small residual parcel of a much larger sprawling range prior to the interstate bisecting it and prior to the development part coming kind of into existence, which creates a beautiful chart and stuff contrast with the six-word branch uh, farm scale and body development. And up until a, a num number of years ago, it was in danger of parts of that were sold or some of the structures perhaps even in ways that level for other purposes. And it would have been pre-pandemic and committed itself to well, protecting, preserving historic qualities of this landscape and also uh, restoring. And this was a really a remarkable turn of events from just a number of years ago when Entirely. One of the structures on the, the property is, as I mentioned, a small log cabin, or you can call it the oldest, if not the oldest structure in the museum, and it's original. And what you see there on the landscape, printed on the landscape, is really the history of agriculture in the Museum of Allen, progression over time. So, and, and I won't go into the details of some of the, uh, the some of the bizarre proposals uh, to use this property in years past, but suffice it to say, uh, we have adopted the CTA framework for preserving the site. We have found a tenant. Uh, well, first off, before we, before uh, our tenant moved in, we finally allocated some significant funding to restore farm accounts. And our tenant, as you mentioned, is Farm Connect, which uh, the previous day known as CPAC, or the Community Agriculture Forum. It's not the name of the community name. 
And so they, they are a tenant out there, and it's a perfect synergy between their mission, both in terms of uh, outreach to the community related to agriculture, but also in terms of preserving and improving the agricultural heritage of this place and the site itself. So they're out there as part of our fulfillment of our strategic framework and vision for this site. We have undertaken this process of uh, an interpretive plan for the site. And uh, the standards are all sorts of challenges that probably many of us face in work that we do where either individuals don't fully, uh, some individuals don't fully appreciate uh, uh, the cultural resource values and something that they say they can potentially dilapidate it. And there are better and higher use, especially if it's juxtaposed to uh, a bunch of modern development, then the argument as well, the site of the historical significance of the site. And so, after that, we get it back to the that it's not a So, I consider it a, a, a rare, sadly, a, a rare success story. Success story to be celebrated rather than more often than not only the deal with the constant attrition of cultural and historical resources. What else am I missing? I think there are pretty most of it that we recognize that we've had the brand of Captain Lake and those other states have kind of evolved along the way over the course of a number of years because of the area today. They continue to become so engaged and we're going to see where we end up in the future of the uh, progress out there. And then one, one thing that uh, Nick is working on in addition to the interpretive plan is an MFD and farm to help the land a little bit more of our, our individual and partnership goals just to guide a little bit more of that direction. If we are on a bit of kind of staggered paces at times with the nonprofit, we're kind of making a full injury to mediate. And we're hoping that the MOD will sort of help us both to set some meetings the way we want to do, but also get some kind of checks in sort of how we move together and not necessarily you know, buying us to not get things done, but also kind of make sure that we are doing a lot of the way we don't get on the side and we can have to do that. So that'll be really cool. Um, yeah, they're uh, essentially the way that that works in terms of their use of the space is that their contribution is really helping with the restoration work that we were able to do the building and they think that's going to cut the way up to kind of a, an office level function. Um, and then we'll, we'll see the other part of the MOU will contemplate the nation of the agriculture in the Mahia Valley, both in terms of the history that that site presents, but then also having the way of acting um, on top of the community working on agriculture. So I think it's really cool. Um, kind of public interface pieces that have been received. That's I think that's really good. And I think the sixth year, there was a bad then with the town of Ellis, but then the sixth year, I think I was just really good talking about the lawn before I came and I got what it really passed. Was it an interview question? No, it was a past interview. Yeah. Well, I don't remember one day. Maybe there was one even in the interview. But yeah, no, it was. I think that you had not to see the site and see folks in any very popular. I think we come out and keep up with it. So it's been kind of fun to see the project. Maybe we can use one of these guys out. Yeah, maybe good. Other comments on the wall? Okay, well, next off, uh, Matt, tell us about what you have cooking out at uh, Smith's Local. Uh, uh, that's the short answer. Okay, a lot. Um, your answer on most yes. things related to uh, the So, uh, the big one is I think this group's heard about uh, the restoration of the land. So, I have an update on that project. Um, so, I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, so, we acquired an original alien detention center at the Houston Party Center. We did that back in 2017. Uh, they were really generous. They helped create a lot of new, uh, we constructed the foundation, and then we started trying to figure out what the plan was for that. In the process of working on that one, and I believe it was 2019, and we were looking at the fairground, we acquired another building that we made in PC. It was not in great shape, but it 
you know, I'm hoping that the book should be restored, but the court said the vision initially was to have these two bear children right next to each other, which may not have the feel of what the temple was like. One of the buildings was set aside, it was still building set aside as a uh, kind of an emergency exhibit to complement our galleries now. Uh, the other building was set aside for a state of art collection. So, I don't think most folks want to realize that the museum stores 50,000 objects in order to go over the And there are 3D objects. So, we don't need a lot of pictures and documents and things like that. So, that's not why you want to go outside, but that's what you should do it because you're really good at it. Um, so, we ended up getting a grant in 2020. Uh, and look at any need to do an assessment of both buildings, uh, which includes cost estimates and all those things. Put us in place with five and a half dollars in there, and we did come to the Captain American Department of Program. In 2021, we applied for that grant. Um, we did an action to the 20th, to pick up after applied in November of 20, and then received the grant in December of 21. Started the design process. Um, Eventually got to the point where we got bids in the summer of 2023. I'm hoping we're working with cost estimates from the summer of 2020, with fall of 2020. So, um, like a lot of budget, we found that was severely in budget. So, what we decided to do at that point was we wanted to move forward with the exhibit building, so we chose the project. And these are the ones we had in hand. The majority of them could be the first building, we had things to say should be. Working with Brian here in the next couple weeks, we could be doing the next week. Um, so that building will be done. We also did a separate grant to work with the Research and Associates to uh, develop a nursing exhibit on the inside of that, that, that building that we just saw the concept lines for and then the cost. I think we have a lot for that opening of it. We're hoping to open that uh, exhibit building in May of next year. In the meantime, we knew we had about $350,000 footfall, so we applied a number of the process and started to do it now with no doubt there with us to see the $350,000 plan with the goods we got between our original cost estimates and the road activity. We could find out about that during December, so please be good at the meetings. If that happens, then the construction of the flood and storage building, which would be identical to the silver, it would be entirely new, which is ideal for state So that would be again in the spring, you know, we get this going So I think that kind of brings everybody up to date. It's super exciting. I mean, the paid notes are long and you can cut the working side here. You can finally get to the point where we're ready to open the building. Uh, you, can, you can actually see the lobby going to come up and it's, it's really exciting for us. So that's kind of our first project and exhibit. Just a couple other quick things. Um, we've also been working on uh, our locomotive restoration uh, for quite a while now. And we've been doing that very grassroots. We had a, a volunteer who had an extensive history in the motives. We've been leading up the effort. We've been doing all volunteer. We're finally getting to the point where we're going to have to start bringing some stuff in the a very exciting news was we got a smoke stop back. We've been gone for two years, we're probably four. We just have to be gone to the site. Um, that's finally back. Uh, we've also used all the good to do with the windows. Maybe we're going to do it. Uh, we hope to bring some of the items next year. And we'll add right now. This thing's probably going to be done. It's still up in the air. So we've, we've had the ultrasound plan, we know the repairs need to be done, uh, but the first, uh, so the, the business owner is really engaged with the project and he's going to do it super cheap for us. We're going to make $10,000 super cheap if we sold the business. And the guy wants $30,000, so at some point we're going to have to make a decision is this a cosmetic restoration or is it, is it worth spending the money to actually be able to fire it up? We're not going to drive it new town for. Um, the insurance there in Grand Rapids County will not do that a risk of benefit person. Um, but yeah, it's not just, just me. I had some volunteers who literally want us to put track all the way around Portland and drive a locomotive around. Um, but it's it's definitely coming. I think it'll probably be a couple more years, but, but it's nice to see the progress made on that. And like I said, it's it's been fun to engage with the community because there's a number of volunteers who've been coming out for years working on that. We're all going to invest. Um, 
two other quick things. Um, the other big thing we're working on, like I said, a lot is uh, what we're doing is one of the only six in the state of Montana that can better be made in their commodities and museums. Um, we are due to be able to do the food, so we're going to see that process. Um, very, very lengthy self study that I submitted back in June. We're now coordinating with our reviewers so we will have two of you on the ground with the video. And the funds have been available this month. Uh, it will be all day meeting with every staff member, all aspects of what we do in the community. Um, we'll have meeting with commissioners, uh, meeting with the department of the city. It's a very, very uh, I'll be over the weekend. Get that one and we'll get that letter and still send it again for that. So it's just a uh, just a lot. So that's happening. And then finally, something very happy. We're in the Lincoln Portfolio. So if anybody's come off the Lincoln Floors or they've been in the history program to do, it's an evening program in December in the building. It's super fun. Three hours of them. Oh, you've got to do it. I've been out there. Yeah. Essentially, what we do, as we describe it, is it's like going to a play, only instead of the scenes taking place on the stage, there are five scenes, each one takes place in a different one of our historic buildings, and all of the scenes are written to be historically accurate. We essentially interpret the past, but do so, you know, like reading historical right? So you're still learning as you're going through, but it's also some very engaging. A lot of the scenes are immersive, they're hands on. In the past, we've had people some Christmas carols, we've had one year prior to the pandemic, so we were on cutting edge. We had them, we had a scene from the 1918 pandemic in some other church, and they actually were folding paper cups for the, the flu victims of the hospital. And they figured out we can't let people show the cups. So just kind of interesting stuff like that. Um, it's a really fun program. It's, it's good for kids, probably about seven and above. Uh, so, obviously, the phone is in that way to a very distant point. Um, and very engaging and so that things if you decide to come through for a while. So, that's what we said. What we said. What we said. Oh, yeah, we just had a book sale. Um, we had our annual book sale, youth book sale. We partnered with Larry Paul on that. Um, they just went out of it. $29,000 which all the money raised by our time to take those towards uh, education and preservation projects at the community. So, to get it is uh, exhausting. <laughs> but it is great. Uh, just really fun. And I would say, one of my favorite events in the fact that A, it puts out on the uh B, it's a great funder of the group. I think most importantly, it provides the most effective books that are needed. It's a little bit about the students' importance and remembering that the school and that it's a pretty much for the country to get out of it. So, hopefully, we can see that we can get out of it. Yeah, EIS say a lot about planning documents. I've been almost done with the not on the other schedule. If I remember right, it was in the middle of time to get tickets there and talk about that. So, we're actually putting tickets on set a week earlier this year. So, uh, you should be able to find them for a website. Uh, there's an online booking form that we do. Um, but we'll put the on sale November 18th. And, and they will go essentially until they're sold out. I would say in some years we've sold out in the 10 days. Uh, others, there was one year we didn't sell out of the seven or eight that we've done the program. But it's also set up so there's I'll back up a little bit. So we do four tours on Friday, the, so it's December 13th. 15, we do four tours on Friday, two on Saturday, and two on Sunday. We have 10 total, so about 10 spots of tours. So we have about 200 spots available. But those prime ones, like the kind where you can go out to dinner and then show up to the Rangers boards or vice versa, those go real quickly, especially that Friday and Saturday. So it's, we make sure it's not the weekend, we do that into the city on the weekend, and we do the weekend after that. Okay. So keep an eye if you're interested, check our website or what has always follow us on Facebook for one of those, sign up for the new newsletter, and then we get to the point of the public that is good. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I've I found ways to stick to it. Any other questions from that? Okay. Well, but your know, land management is up. What's uh what's happening in either outer or anywhere else? I did a few updates for them. Yeah, I'm gonna start with like a bigger one that's not really giant related. Um it's a little uh the BLM just signed in the new which is KP, so like Kate's basic. Um, which just basically like formalizes our code for to work with CSDP is really important. Um, it's stuff we've been doing all along, but now we're like, we have to bring down, I think. It's just really important to put in the Yeah. And um, yeah, so it adds to existing partnerships for the research to right? And it's work, it's mostly like dual and uh, under reduction that we do. Um, and then um, just we're facilitating a lot of like stack to stack work. Um, so we're doing, you know, we did a big consultation, but we're just starting to focus on, I think, we're just and like working with like CSDP files, like CSDP files, feedback, and just really, you know, trying to prioritize and think about mitigation all the time. Um, that's going to become really important as the BLM acquires um, the CSDP for the land in the lower black foot. Those lands have been privately owned for a couple of years. So we're working on like reconnection and plant restoration in the world that's like most real canning. So I'm gonna write up that. Um I have a little this is kind of like an overview. This is more more information. But I was just signed in September. Um we're really excited about that. So um and then for Garnet, um I'll let Nick talk about stuff, but I'll do some because you just started like I'm not two weeks ago, but like I got some <laughs> updates and now let him talk about me kind of like what his position going to be. Um so we were able to do or finish a fuel production project up at Garnet. Um in 2010 we did the initial one, which was a lot more heavy equipment up. They're taking a lot of trees out. So this is like not that, but the continuation of the small trees out when they're small. So that went really well. Um it's a concept, it's a concept and it just comes out and like a couple of feet down and pile them and all the archaeologists are out there and make you think of it's gonna pop out those features. <laughs> that was kind of a whirlwind. Um and so yeah that's just really important to help project when you think wow how it's set up but it's really the only thing okay, along with you can't always form up there with um so that was good. Um we thought it was gonna get pushed off anyway, so fine what they did in October. It was just like two weeks of Um the glacier crew was back up at doing stabilization. They were they were doing two sheds last year. They were able to finish those and get the roots on those. And then they also did facade and window sales stabilization at the Wells Hotel, baby store, and Kelly Steen. And then also in the Wells Hotel, they were able to repair huge woodpecker holes in the side of the building. Um, and they'll just continue to come back every year. That'll be continuing to be coming. Um, it's the glacier um, building stabilization for which National Park. They come down with every year they usually do two hitches. Um I'm not sure how long it's been going on, but a while. And so they do two hitches this year. And it's like you know it's like the rest of the change and it's okay. You can go in so um, well, the actual experts did so many yeah. hands on so mm -hmm. that we just can't yeah. and hopefully like I'm sure Nick has any but we'll grow that stupid thing so maybe maybe it's have more than nice Um and then I do sit on the on GPA Garnet Preservation Association on the license place plate fund. Um and we did award our grant to the Bonner Milcom History Center for their interesting signs. First yeah, so I'm very excited. And I I got them a cheese from them. So tell us more about the program. Yeah. I'm not aware of do you want to talk about your or our program? Our program. Yeah. Oh yeah. Program. So there is a Montana State Ghost Town um, license plate. So you know, it's one of the ones you pay extra for. 
and then that like goes into a fund, um, that EPA runs, okay. and then it's up to like five thousand dollars. We can meet that's the amount of the grant, and it just kind of rolls over. So it's like you can apply whenever. It's okay. Um, it's pretty. It has to be. It's preservation or stabilization of significant publicly accessible historic building within the state of Montana, or creation or enhancement of historic interpretation or education of So it's it, it's pretty broad and like yeah, and we and priority is given to like nonprofits, but that's not necessarily very open and we're we have to yeah the license plate itself features uh several different yeah. from Garna. Mm -hmm. Um but it's for ghost towns in general. Yeah, right? and so like it's for all the ghost towns, but GPA just manages the funds and it could be any historic preservation in Montana, like not just Garnet, but Garnet or GPA just Garnet. And yeah, uh, the Garnet Preservation Association. They're our partner. And then, does someone have Oh, I mean, yeah, at least four years. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's some that close to it. Yeah. I'm going to have a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, so that was pretty exciting. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about what the project is like real quick. Um, sure. We were uh, thrilled to find out about this. Um, it looks um, you'll be staying down there on um, maybe in the restoration of a storage building which got me delayed a little bit. So then we found out the participation is also part of the local grant. So we are going to have that install three. If you're the good signs, including the Bear Road history at the Age Fund. And we're uh, working with uh, Lisa Bickle, who's going to help us with that project. And we hope to have them installed in the spring, um, along with our garden, which uh, the Real Impact Bank is going to meet. And have a public uh, open house, like the last day of the old Halloween days. Really yeah. there's a grant that's very beautiful. Yeah. So it's very open. Does that have to do with, with mining or ghost towns? Well, yeah, it's an interpretation. Like um, Randolph Moon was thinking about doing interpretive signs related to the yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's very. Mm -hmm. um, and then what else we do? We're doing a Garnet master plan. That's like in the conceptual phases. Um, before, so the main part that's going to come out at first is we are going to revamp the main parking lot to fit more spaces and just. But then the rest is kind of conceptual, and eventually there are plans for a visitor center in the parking lot. That could be expanded one thing, but maybe that's a long way. But we're working on. Any further, like they from it, and then it might be good. I don't know. But what else is going on? We'll see. Like this. There's a parking. Yeah. The, the general idea is to, to move the visitor center out of the town itself. So there's not one of the saloons doesn't have a gift shop in it anymore, yeah. is, is the, the goal in the long run. Um, but we're also hoping to increase communication as time goes on. Um, we have a few other projects in the works to help with that. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, we are planning on redoing the rain road, which is the main access road to Highway 200. Um, it's a big project. I think it's seven or eight miles. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of, yeah, and then the, also some thing, kind of like revamping all the roads and then trying to not have people come from, from 90 or 90, a certain, like the wrong people. To me. It's on Google, it comes up the worst way. And we've got to tell people to do If you look at any of our reviews on um, Google or TripAdvisor, all of the negative ones are about the access points. 
but that's the only bad thing they have to say about it. So we really want to highlight that as we're going to put an investment into that uh, and hopefully put up some new signage to deter people from taking those more treacherous routes. Um, one of them is First Chance Gulch, which is actually a historic trail um, that was original to the mine. Um, it was originally only used for miners and mules. And now you're driving vehicles on it. People are trying to take their uh, their RVs up there. Uh, so it, not exactly the safest thing. So we're hoping to try to make that into a, a dedicated Jeep road or an ATV track. Um, but some of this stuff, uh, the parking lot that I mentioned, is we're looking at uh, summer of next year for implementation. Um, and then the road itself, probably spring of 26. So we're hoping to get that done. But that'll be a lot of construction. So. Yeah, the time level. Um, mm, so I don't know. Well, we did the fees are going to get into the consultant. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, so we just counted our last pot of money um, that came out of our fee boxes yesterday. Um, we did have a theft of one of our fee boxes, so it's not the most accurate information. Um, but this year we had about thirty thousand dollars more in fees than we did in twenty twenty, um, just off of that ten thousand ten dollar increase. Um, so that's made up for it pretty well. Uh, our visitation is just a little bit lower than last year, um, just a bit over twenty three thousand. Um, but that's to be expected after the pandemic years. Um, that is funding Range Road parking lots. Uh, my position um, is coming out of that increase. Uh, we need more focus on Garnet itself. Uh, the, our other planner, really, Craig, says too much on our plate right now. So that's kind of why I am going uh, to give Garnet the attention it deserves. I think that's everything I had, too. Um, more stabilization projects coming. We've got a couple of buildings that have. Uh, Pretty bad rot in their foundation. Cole's cabin is one of those. We have another roof that we're going to need to replace uh, probably in the spring if there's too much snow laid on it. Too. So it's, it's always something. Can I ask a question more about that it's you? And uh, you assume you've had some other presidential work in other places. You may be here. Do you want to highlight some of what you've done prior to the community? Yeah, so I'm, I'm originally from Missouri. Uh, I've been with the Federal Service for about five years now. I bounced between the National Park Service, um, the BLM, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, I've got degrees in history and anthropology. So this side of preservation is really what interests me, despite my position technically being in recreation. Um, I worked for the National Park Service in Virginia on Assateague Island. If anyone's ever heard of it, it's the one with the horses on. Um, and they have a couple of historic lifeguard stations from the early 1900s before the Coast Guard was really established. And uh, shipwrecks were much more of an issue on the Eastern Shore. Um, so I did quite a bit of uh, hands on preservation work there. Um, got some archival experience too with the US Army Corps of Engineers, um, as well as some more uh, tribal relations uh, focused experience as well. So a little bit all over the place, but I think. Garnet is really a nice inclusion of all of this together. Questions for me? Yeah. Well, the shame for us that we should be sending them that way. So, really great. <laughs> Speaking of the Forest Service, National Museum of Forest Service History, Tom, uh, it looks like you're uh, standing in for Lisa today. Yeah, so, I know Lisa. Yeah. Um, I think we have a few renderings. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I think Lisa said that you all have seen sort of a fly through of our museum collection recently the National Conservation Council. So the big news that you all may know or may not know is that we actually broke ground on the center uh, in September, September 9th, or 6th. Uh, Richard Stromeyer was there and spoke. Maybe some of you were there. This is our campus. If you haven't been out there, it's 31 acres, special use permit from the Forest Service. Um, 
We are not a port service as much as everyone seems to imply. We're a nonprofit. Uh, so we are, we are not the agency. However, we partner a lot with the agency and the campus is one good example of that. The study that enables a special use permit uh, is an incredible asset to the museum to have an outdoor campus and now a flagship facility as an indoor flagship facility at Jump Conservation Medicine Center. That northern part of the top part of the screen has been developed over the past few seven years. You all have been out there with the interpretive trails, the exhibits. Uh, the newest exhibit is a PPD aircraft, just like the one that's at the airport, but we are interpreting them. Um, and so that's very exciting. They pulled it off the tarmac and up, up onto our campus that day in that deviation that donated that aircraft to us. Um, so um, the campus, as you see, uh, the center, the National Conservation Center, the center of the youth, and the lynch and the The next slide kind of shows, so it says that uh, this is a mass timber design. Um, obviously, most of you are familiar with mass timber, small diameter logs. Um, I'm thrilled to say that the it's so about 25,000 square feet, about 100,000 square feet of wood. Uh, new forest restoration projects, it has all been donated by 14 different wood products companies from across the city of North Texas. They're absolutely just thrilled with that partnership. They couldn't be happier. The reason they wanted to partner with this is because they want the, the story of forestry to be told, that history of forestry to be told. Not necessarily their story, but the story. That's really like the museum is about what the translation is about to tell that story of our country's traditions. So, uh, the wood, uh, it's like a bird, the wood, you would say, uh, Tom Chung, an architect out of Boston, designed this building. He was there at groundbreaking also. It's a really quite well known mass timber architect. And we're the still with the design. Um, the next slide, I think, shows that we broke ground. And you think seven years is a long time, Matt. This has been 20 plus years in the making. Um, and some of you are probably familiar with that. And they probably being one of those people that some, you know, years ago or four years, people have been saying, mm, I'm not sure that really happened. There's a field out there out by the airport that will have an image and a block of rock. Various reasons I won't go into it. You know, it's been sort of bits and starts. However, uh, about seven years ago or so, we got some large individual donations that do all the fundraisers. I'm the development director, so I am, of course, that's where your large donations are going to come Not so much foundations, although those help and government and all that. So, that really kind of tipped the scales for us so that we were able to go to Murdoch like you on that. And I hope you get that grant because they did give us a grant uh, for the SEC because we had a lot of momentum. So, we, 20 years in the making, we finally broke ground. We had a great groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, like I mentioned, um, Richard Stillmeyer was there and spoke very articulately as. Uh, usual, uh, and it was just a fabulous day. It was hot, but it was a short, sweet, uh, about hour long ceremony where we go down. So, Dick Anderson Construction is our contractor. They uh, constructed this building that we are in now, and uh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Let me this movie. Wow. So, they're out there as we speak. Um, Getting the foundation uh, ready and in. Uh, we're thrilled that after 20 years we can start construction. The plan is to get that foundation in uh, before it gets to bulk <laughs> and uh, continue construction through next year, 2025. Uh, we are hoping for a late 25 grand opening, probably be the beginning of 2026. Um, Again, for various reasons, for construction delays, we had uh, cost increases like we did, Matt, like everybody did, I think, as far as the pandemic. 
um, we designed an architect that puts some nodes at. So we ran into that also, but it is underway. And um, again, the demo was planned for early 2026. Um, that's our, our big news. Um, our capital campaign uh, was about, is about $15.5 million. We're still fundraising for the exhibits. Um, we wanted to go ahead and start construction. We had that money for the building. We still got about a million dollars for our exhibits that we got to raise. Uh, that's on Lisa and my shoulders. And uh, that's what we do every day uh, is, is raise money. And we're we're making great headway with that. We've got the grant from the National Government. And we've got a lot of local support, I wanted to mention. Um, from commissioners, um, from Dennis the Washington Foundation, uh, Neptune, I mentioned aviation with the PPU aircraft, Blackfoot, like my health foundation, the Zero County Trails Grant Program. Person was here, I think. I think, I think. No, yeah, anyway. Yeah, but anyway, uh, Tracy Foundation out of Helena. So, and hundreds of individuals in the Zero County. So the local support has been fantastic, you know, and combining with our other financial support we've been able to make it happen. And I wanted to mention that because it's super important with that kind of local support as well. So Missoula will have this incredible looking building, but inside that building will be incredible exhibits telling the story of the I say incredible because we're working with a firm of art processing. So we did the 9 11 Museum, the Gay Museum, uh, the Holocaust Museum. It is all about interactivity, visitor participating in these exhibits about conservation history. Um, one quick example of the uh, exhibit called the Rings of Chin, and it'll be a five foot in diameter tree ring. Picture that with three rings. Every ring is a decade of time. The AD equipment is above this tree ring, directly down on it. You take a cup, you move along each of those tree rings, and let's say so you go to 1910, up tops from that tree ring, Big Burn. And you learn about the Big Burn, maybe at, for the first time, and so you learn the basics about the Big Burn. Then move that up a little bit, but you get into that Big Burn too. So things like that will excite visitors, we think, and really invite them to think about what their role is in contemporary conservation history, because our archive is so stacked in my every day that history, as you all know, happened. So Dave reminds us of that, and um, we will be that kind of experience. There we go. That's it. We're we're rocking along. Long time trying to stop. Super exciting. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a testament to safe bold visions. Because I I'll mention I yeah. I remember early days of this organization and attending board meetings 25 years ago, thinking myself, not only do the, all the board members look like they probably serve you know, in a different show, and uh, not a particularly diverse group, but uh, and that's changed over time. But just the, the perseverance they get to the point of success like this is pretty admirable. I think inspiring that that we should not self limit our our goals and to see the big big outcome. Any questions for? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Great. Yeah, you yeah. bet. Take care. Great. Okay. Well, this is Sophia still online. Oh, okay. Well, well, is there more to be heard from? Uh, uh, Bonner Milltown. Bonner Milltown is on a very, very, very infinitesimal scale. Uh, as far as it, um, I would just like to say that um, it's very easy to do a little work that this is not the biggest money. And we do actually need to be the exception yet of the Bill Trinity Museum 
have worked with everybody in your team on um, community education projects. We have the Dean of Class Summer, including some of the history of the city of South Park, and um, the first thing very general in the Amin Park project. We have um, the previous Major of the University, where it came out talking with us um, many times, um, with the jury in particular. Uh, planning process um, with the Indian Museum of Planning Business Plans, the Institute of Planning, the Visa, the Field of Planning, and then uh, we will contact Brian and meet that for the employees. And this year it was going to be the tech learning, and we were able to collaborate with one of the sixth graders with the music team and come up with the library for the coming back for the only 20 or 30 years. That's all very important. And then later the fun is for the to go on, but we have the uh, university evening. And so, oh, I think that we really need to be. Yeah, well, you may have a couple of them first, we need to do and let's have a I'm as far as the journey on camera, it's been pretty exciting. We have a new director for the last year, the year of the 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 program in the year of the year, the year of the year, the year of the year, the Thank you. 
Sophia, you've joined us uh, again. We we'll lost you there momentarily. Any updates from you and your world? Hi, yeah, sorry, I had to jump off for a moment. I had um, some computer issues, so I do apologize about that. Um, but one thing that I do want to mention is that Preserve Historic Missoula is kind of restarting our education programs and talks. Um, and so we did want to mention that there will be a free talk at the Montgomery Distillery this Sunday, uh, November 10th at 4 p.m. Um, I will be talking about my research um, that I utilize um, in the capacity of Unseen Missoula tours um, and also with the City of Missoula downtown or the City of Missoula Historic Preservation Office um, about our Chinese history and our red light history along West Front Street and West Main Street. Great, so that's the 10th of November, you say? Yes. Excellent, who does not like to go to a distillery yeah. or a uh, <laughs> distillery-related <laughs> con? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, it should be a really good turnout. It will be our first uh, Preserve Historic Missoula uh, talk of the year of sorts. And we are trying to plan some other ones. Um, so we'd love to see you guys out there if you'd want to come. Thank you. Thanks for that. Anything else from Missoula County? Else from anyone that would like to share with you. Folks are wondering uh, if you have an inquiring mind and are wondering why a county commissioner would take such an interest in topic like that, uh, heritage and historic preservation. Prior to my current gig uh, at, with Missoula County, I served as public historian and historical research associates at Missoula. Prior to that, I had a, another professional career with the um, Well, very good. Unless anyone has anything else, we'll probably circle up again in the spring sometime. If there are folks who are not at the table, either virtually or here in person, who you think should be or might like to be a part of these conversations, please let us know and we'll definitely get them on the list, the mailing list for this event. Uh, feel free to invite them, let them know about this we'll probably over the next few months. To reach out and see if we can help this is Well, the last time we met, we actually met in the bottom and took a tour of some historic resources out there. It was pretty great. It's really contemplating something like that. Okay, well, thanks everyone. Uh, we will be adjourned. Have a great rest of the day.